Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Hi, it's me, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Today we have an art journal tutorial, step-by-step -step process video, telling you all the inside tips and tricks. If you want to support my channel, you can sh shop through my Amazon influencer links, or you can click on the PayPal link. Both of these are in the description box below. Want to support my channel another way? Hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your creative friends. So today I'm going to work with the entire rainbow of colors and I'm going to be working on this mini clipboard. I bought this at the dollar store so you can check out there but I'll look at Amazon and see if I can find a link for it. I'm using the bulldog clip to keep this opened. I prefer this kind of clip. Um, some of them will make it much more difficult to get access and I've given this a coat of gesso, I've sanded it and I've given it another coat of gesso. And I've done that, you know, over a period, you know, of, se of several days. And I, I've done several of these. So I'm just going to divide this up. I want seven colors for the colors of the rainbow. And, you know, you, you could just eyeball this. But for whatever reason, today I feel very mathematical and I'm going to be measuring it. So depending on the size of your clipboard. And you can do this on a large clipboard, on a, sm on a small one. This would also make a great project to do with your child. So I'm just going to start with the red at the bottom. And I want the lighter colors at the bottom because I'm going to be stenciling with black. And if I have the violet, the indigo and the violet at the at the other end, that would be too dark and you really wouldn't see the black. It wouldn't stand out. But I guess I could have stenciled with white. So I'm mixing the colors in between a little bit. Now this is Crafters Workshop heavy body paint and I find just adding a little bit of water works really well to help spread the paint. It's very thick and um, it dries quite quickly. So I find I'm adding water to it. But if you're using craft paint, um, it may be more liquidy, it may spread a little bit, you know, so you, you, you adjust, but that's a little bit of a tip in case you have a problem. Now the yellow kind of got muddied with the, with the orange in there, but I'm okay with that because I don't necessarily, I'm not going for exact colors. right there I need to add a little bit of water and spread it and get that green color and you know it doesn't matter what shade of green that you have this is what was available with the crafters workshop I could have picked my sap green or my hookers green from another brand or my craft paint so use what you have as always And I'm being sure to paint the edges. Although later on you're going to see that that wasn't completely necessary, but I like doing it when I have the paint out in case I don't end up doing something else. So I mix the blue with the purple color to get kind of more of an indigo color. And then I'm mixing that purple, the grape jelly, with the raspberry sorbet to get what I think is more of a violet color. And I'm just kind of trying to get under, under that, that clip and the sides. And don't worry if you get paint on the clip, that comes off fairly easily with a baby wipe and just a, a spray of Murphy's oil soap on the baby wipe and then just rub it off and it comes off very easily at a later date. So I'm getting some of the sponge sugar white paint and thinning it down and with my fan brush I'm just going to splatter. 
And the splattering, you know, I like the look of it, but it also hides some of the imperfections in the paint. Um, you know, the board isn't exactly completely smooth. There may be some bumps, there may be something else. And the splatters kind of camouflage that, as well as adding interest. Because it's a clipboard, I don't want to add any texture. And, you know, I want to create today, but I didn't want to really create, get too involved. So I'm mixing up, once I dried that, I'm mixing up the gold and I'm going to splatter it with gold because, well, you know, it's got to have some bling. And I dry, if I'm splattering with two different colors, I dry in between because if wet paint onto wet paint, it could actually blend and often it's not a combination that I really like. So this is the stencil by Carmen Medlin. It's called Always In My Heart and love it. And I thought it would be perfect for Valentine's Day. So, so this would be a really cute Valentine's Day gift for a teacher, for, for your child. I mean, who's not going to like it? And you can use these clipboards just as regular clipboards, or you could have it to post, you know, chore lists for your kids. You could have it uh, for activities that your kids have. Just stick post-it notes on top of it. Every child gets a, their own designer clipboard. So the possibilities are endless. And, and don't, they look really cute, several of them hanging on a wall. So now I'm just taking the black paint and I'm thinning it just a smidge. I'm just, I sprayed water on it and I'm using a makeup sponge and stenciling this on. So what you need to do when you're stenciling is get the paint on, tap it off and apply more than one layer. Don't think you need to get perfect coverage right off the bat and don't press really hard down on your sponge. Both of those things, too much paint or pressing really hard, it's going to make it seep under the stencil. Now I could have put painter's tape across the top to hold that stencil in place. So here we've done a very, very simple background, but we're basically putting a silhouette on top of it. And you have, you know, bold and black and it just, it always pops, it always works. You could definitely do this on an art journal page. If you don't want to use all the colors of the rainbow, use three colors. You know, start one at the top, one at the bottom, and mix it, meld it together, blend it together in the middle. That would be quite effective too. Now, since I've got the black paint on my makeup sponge, I'm just going around the edges, and I just, it kind of frames the clipboard and in my mind it just finishes it. You make a mistake, grab baby wipe and wipe it off. Again, like stenciling, this is best done, you know, do some and then you can always add more and you don't want it wet globbed paint like that. I hope you can see what a difference just edging it in black. So by the time I'm done this, my whole side is black. So if you know you're going to do this, you could skip painting on the sides. Now there seemed to be a little too much space at the top and I wanted to add something. So I like this little motif at the bottom of this stencil. So what I'm doing is just using painter's tape, masking off the area that I don't want. And I apologize that this is off camera and you'll see how I do that, how it works in a, how it looks in a minute. I'm just ripping the tape, kind of making it go around what I want to isolate. And that way I don't have to worry about getting paint where I don't want paint. So there's that little motif that I, I really like. And actually I would just love a stencil with just that. 
So I'm going to center this on the clipboard. And again, I, you know, I, sometimes, most times I just eyeball it, but here I'm, I'm marking the halfway point and I'm using a Stabilo all pencil. It's a white one. And when I'm done with the, the markings, I can just use a baby wipe and that will disappear because it's water soluble. So I'm really liking that addition. It's very, very cute. And now I'm going to put one on either side. Now, again, instead of just eyeballing it, and I think it's because it's on a stencil and it's really hard to see exactly where it is, I'm just drawing a line again with the Stabilo Wall pencil and lining it up, seeing how close I am to the edge, and just using the makeup sponge and the black paint again. And I'm really happy with what I have. And there, I'm just getting rid of this to be a Lowell pencil, as I told you. Now, I'm not, I'm looking at the bottom and I'm thinking, okay, I, I wish I had a little something extra here. So I'm masking off even more of this. There's a little heart right in the middle of this that I'm going to put in each of the bottom corners. So when you have any stencil, look for little motifs, little designs that you like that when you mask off everything around it, you can utilize and get the most out of your stencils. I think this would be lovely with putting white on it as well. So now that this side is pretty much done, I had to give some thought about what I want to put on the other side. So I decided I'm going to kind of do the reverse and I'm going to show you a technique that I call reversing the stencil. So I'm going to use this Balzer Designs stencil. It's called Love Frame. And I believe this is the bigger one, not the smaller one. Absolutely, it was the bigger one. And I've given it a coat of black gesso underneath, and now I'm holding the stencil in place and putting a, using a makeup sponge to apply white gesso. You could use white acrylic paint, but I like the gesso because it's going to allow the acrylic paint that you're putting on top of it to adhere better. Now, I'm not worried about making this completely opaque white. Some places I am, like the heart, because I want that to be the brightest part. But if some are darker or more black peeking through, it's going to give some shading and, and to the colors that you apply afterwards. So you could tape the stencil down and it's, making this really hard because it's the up, up back side of the clipboard and that's at an angle and because I don't want to scratch the surface I have this towel underneath and both of those are causing me a bit of grief. So in a minute I do move the towel a little bit to alleviate some of that. So I'm working hard to hold down the stencil and just applying more and more gesso to all the open parts. Now it's looking lovely just black and white but now wherever the white is that's where I'm going to apply color. So I've put a few colors on my craft mat. I don't end up using them all because again I had no idea what I was going to do. So I grab the yellow and then I grab this jelly bean blue and they mix and they kind of make this teal in there 
and I've got different shades and tones of these colors. And I'm not being, I'm not really thinking about this too terribly much, but I'm really, I liked what I saw. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go from the top. I'm going to put the yellow at the top and then the blue and make the blue and the teal coming down. Cause I really liked that. So I simplified my original plan. Now being, I'm holding the stencil down and I'm being very careful not to move it. Because if it doesn't line up perfectly, you're going to end up with some white around the edges. But I, you know, I'll show you what I did to solve that problem. You really can't see it when I'm showing you the peak, but there's little bits of white there. And I don't really mind that so much. But if you don't like it, you can just take some of that color, thin it out, and just paint over where the white is the color that it that should be there and it'll just cover because it's gessoed now originally this was going to be more pink the heart it ends up being very blue periwinkle and right there i'm kind of I'm applying wet paint on top of wet paint and it gets, it gets kind of tacky. So that's when you need to stop, let it dry or dry it. Then I decide, you know, to get rid of some of that white, I'm just going to go around all these pieces with my white fine line bottle. And I absolutely love the fine line bottle. I, I have six of them right now and Oh, I get so much use of them. And for do using with this kind of process, I love the look of it. It lightens the back. I actually end up liking the back better than the front. But I wanted to give this a try with this stencil. And I really didn't want to do uh, too big of a page. But I'll, you'll definitely be seeing me doing this kind of reversing the stencil technique with some of the um, stencils that I'm that I've have from the crafters workshop. This kind of makes it look a little more mosaic and there's a lot of stencils in this release that this technique is going to really work well for. And as careful as I'm being, I'm not doing a perfect job. Sometimes it goes a little more on the black. Sometimes it goes in the color. And at the end of the day, it looks great. And no, I don't show you every step of the way. I, I think I turn off the camera right here and I just go. If you're wondering if the fine line bottle, if it hurts your hand, you know, it, it really, because of the shape of it, I find it very easy to use once you get the consistency and the thickness just right. So there you can see it. It really changed the look. Now I've done a lot of work with line work with my fine line bottle. So, you know, initially once you mix the paint, practice, practice making lines, practice making circles, practice, practice, practice. And I'm absolutely loving the back. So I thought I'd tell you that this is what I will varnish it with polycrylic clear gloss. And this is by Minwax. And sometimes I give it for this, I'm going to give it three coats. And then it is a very usable clipboard. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a like, share the video, leave a comment.